don't mind me I'm just picking out some carrots accidentally thought those were grass weeds I should just film and then weed the garden I had no intentions of coming out here and shooting a garden video tonight it's a beautiful day out here beautiful evening I should say it's been so humid lately and today it is just really awesome weather tomorrow is the first day of my vacation I'm taking a week and a half off of work I got a lot of stuff to do so I don't really have time to show you around but I'm gonna show you around because the garden is spectacular right now we're transitioning from summer to fall the flowers look amazing the mammoth sunflowers have started blooming I mean, can we really walk in there without talking about this bean trellis? This will forever be the entrance to my garden, a big arch trellis full of purple potted pole beans. It really just feels so hobbity walking through here and coming into the garden. My loofah is finally starting to take off and I'm sure it's way too late, but I'm enjoying the foliage and the beans have traveled across. So this trellis will produce some beans. Maybe not loofah, but it'll produce beans. We have harvested and put up gallons and gallons of purple beans off of just this one trellis. I have some zinnia started out here and some basil and a tray of dill. I've kept them underneath this bean trellis because it gives them a little bit of sun exposure, but not too much. As we walk through here, you'll see there's been some pest pressure on some of my cabbage. This one looks pretty good still. This is a cordobu ox heart shape. I'll harvest that for us, but some of this cabbage is going to go to the chickens. And you'll notice that a lot of my tomatoes are showing some signs of disease. And I've actually had quite a bit of damage to my tomatoes as they're ripening on the vine they're bruising before they ripe, ripen. So they have some kind of fungal issue going on, which is unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. My Brussels sprouts and kale underneath this netting is doing good. This kale is from last spring, so I'm going to be cutting this back and giving it to the chickens so it can regen rejuvenate itself and we can get a fall crop off of those. This is a poblano pepper. Some more cabbage back there. This one is a Granny Cantrell tomato. It's a red slicer. These giant marigolds are finally starting to put on some buds and the ones outside the fence have started blooming. It's a Cracker Jack mix of orange and yellow marigolds, giant, giant marigolds, and they can get about four feet tall. And I'm excited that these two right here are the same. They're both yellows. And I've got another one over here, and that one might be yellow too. This is a Sapola, which is a Roma style tomato. And see, I'm out here with my tie tape tonight too, just to tie everything up so nothing breaks while I'm gone. 
This is a Cordoboo paste tomato plant. My cosmos need deadheaded. We had some pretty good rain the last couple of days and it's really knocked my flowers down. My Tabasco pepper plants are loaded up with Tabasco. I love how these grow. They're all reaching up to the sky. These are jalapeno peppers and I really should take some of those in. This is a poblano pepper and that's a really good sized pepper already. Another poblano pepper. And my cayenne pepper. I've got a handful of cayenne peppers on this plant. Basil's looking great and completely recovered from early beetle damage this season. I'm just picking off these flowers. Oh, it smells so good now. My little rosemary. I'm just going to maintenance while we're walking and talking. This was my Ken Kennebec potato row and I've sowed a bunch of fall crops in here. Strawberries are looking fantastic. This is the second harvest of these ever-bearing strawberries. This Dr. Wyke's tomato plant is doing phenomenal. This is a big yellow slicer tomato. Got a lot of tomatoes on it. And you guys, we've still got a month and a half at least of growing season left. We've got plenty of time for all of these tomatoes to come to harvest size. I've got some ping tongue eggplant. And this is a sweet bonnet pepper. This was the mystery pepper that I had mislabeled as a seedling. I thought it was an eggplant until it started growing and just by the shape of the leaves and the growth structure of this, I knew it wasn't an eggplant. My ground cherries are doing fantastic. So ground cherries are really cool. It's a little fruit that grows in a husk like a tomatillo. And when they fall to the ground, they're, they're ripe and ready to eat. They taste very fruity, almost pineapple-y. Oh my gosh. There is a ton of coriander that has fallen off of this cilantro plant that went to seed. I mean, I'm not mad about it, but I was going to save some of that. I still need to do that. I have so much stuff to do tonight, you guys. All right. The Cipolla Roma tomato here. This bed's a hodgepodge full of all kinds of stuff. Next year, it's going to be full of perennials. I've got all-star strawberries in here, some echinacea that'll come back, and then all of those ground cherries down there at the end. I've got some Tabasco peppers back here, some sweet peppers. Just these plants are just loaded up with peppers. Another poblano over here. I've got some red onions running down the center of this bed. A few of these are ready to harvest. You know they're ready when their necks bend like that and you want to dig them up from underneath so you don't loosen the skin and then you dust off the dirt. So I'll be processing some of the onions I have in the house, harvesting some of these to get them drying because you want to cure them. You want to cure them before you store them, which just means you want to let them dry out fully before packing them in a storage bin with other onions. See, this one's ready too. Those are a decent size. This is my first year growing onions and I know they can be a little bit tricky. So I'm not going to be too hard on myself and that these are so small and I grew a lot of onions. So we'll have a lot. They won't store as long because they're small, but I plan on chopping a lot of these and freezing them. And honestly, it's a lot of times just Dennis and I eating and a small onion like that is plenty for us. And then I don't have to store it in the fridge for next time. 
purple sage has made a, a complete full recovery from the beetle damage some sweet peppers and these were all supposed to be sweet peppers but there was a mix-up at the greenhouse I ended up losing a lot of my started plants that I started from seed here they just didn't germinate my pepper plants so I went and picked up a few flats of sweet peppers and in that I also got a cubanelle and several banana pepper plants as you can see they were all supposed to be sweet peppers but it's okay my teddy bear sunflowers need to be deadheaded the cuca melons how precious are those I just pulled out this nasturtium that I had enjoyed so much over the season. It was getting really lanky and it was just becoming a real pain to prune because it was so just on its way out. This purple ball basil has seen better days too, but it smells amazing and I love the color. So I'm just going to trim him back and try to hang on to him through the fall. This row of paste tomatoes, although it looks okay, there's something going on with them because a lot of these tomatoes, as I said earlier, have rotted on the vine before they're fully ripe. And it's such a disappointment, but it is what it is. I mean, it could be, yeah, there's some possible blossom end rot. I mean, I could have some something going on in the soil over here. And we had that really, really heavy rain. So a lot of them split on top of just rotting before they're ripe. I'm going to have a wheelbarrow full for the chickens. They will not be complaining about that one bit. The silver leaf sunflower is one of my favorite plants in the garden. It's just spectacular. It's got all these side shoots, like side branches, and they're all forming little flower heads. It'll bloom all season until the frost. These cosmos. Obviously he needs to be deadheaded, but it's doing great. This is why my hands always look terrible because I am out here without any intention of doing anything but looking and enjoying for a minute and I start pulling stuff off. This sad cucumber plant is, believe it or not, still producing some of these green finger cucumbers and that's what they're supposed to look like just a real thin small pickling cucumber my armenian long is doing fantastic although not setting a ton of fruit anymore it still looks beautiful on this trellis and we have had pounds and pounds of fruit come off of this plant two plants celery I've been harvesting that as I need it now, and pretty soon I'll take it all in and chop it up and freeze it. Here's that patty pan custard squash. Such a cute squash, right? What an unusual shape. I'll pick that in the morning. Squash are best picked in the morning. Same with cucumbers and anything that has a lot of water content. Peppers and tomatoes are better left for the hot afternoon to harvest because their sugar content will be higher. These are some more carrots over here. And I also started some bush peas in front of the carrots next to the celery in this row. These are some okra, burgundy okra, another ground cherry, this Desi Summer Squash has been a producing machine and it has slowed in production as well. But I did re-sow this in other parts of the garden so we'll have another wave of that coming on. You guys, this is why I grow this garden.
this row I just love how this row came together I've got these miniature zinnias called uh, jazzy zinnias jazzy zinnia mix with some holy basil that smells amazing some salmon Alaskan nasturtium and these three semi-determinate terra Thornburg's terracotta I think that one's got something going on with it but overall oh my gosh this plant like that one is just about ready I'm gonna take that one in tonight these ripen to a terracotta color and they're so fun and these plants are loaded up with tomatoes got these zinnias and even though I need to get out here and deadhead and prune everything still just is gorgeous it's just really cool I was so happy to find out that I have yellow zinnias in this giant Benares zinnia mix. And it's really got me thinking that there's some colors that I'm just drawn to in the garden, and yellow is one of them. All those zinnias that I started out by the front entrance are a mixture of red, white, and yellow. And orange I think just like soft muted colors but obviously the red is pretty bright and I'm so excited No Rondonese squash ready to pick. I did pick a lot of squash out of here yesterday and processed it all. These three poblano peppers back here are doing great. Purple basil, purple opal basil, some more celery. That obnoxious noise in the background is just Dennis working on my camper. My beans, I'm not really sure what happened to these poor purple potted pole beans back here, but you know what, it's okay. That's just gonna open up some room for more peas to climb up there. And we have so many beans already, and I mean, look at all the beans that are out here ready to harvest. I mean, I've got plenty of beans. But you guys, these sunflowers. The wild August garden is pretty amazing. My poor winter squash teepee is looking pretty pitiful and I'm hoping it's going to hang on just long enough to get the majority of what's on here ripe. I've got a buttercup squash and a de la cotta on the other side. I've got some sugar baby what? oh nope this isn't sugar baby this is the moon and stars watermelon. How cool I got a couple more of those going. Oh that one climbed up on the sunflower. Here's that moon and stars. It has the same yellow spots as the leaves. And this is awesome. So these are midget melons and these are just about ready to harvest. 
These Chinese red noodle beans obviously are not red, but I am starting to get some red ones up here. I think what happened is the seeds I had saved crossed with homestead beans, which is a green pole bean, and the results were seeds that I saved that are producing this cross of the long noodle bean in green. And you can buy seeds, I mean, they have this variety, but I wonder if it would taste the same. I don't have the green ones to compare side by side. So that'll just have to remain a mystery for now. My little honey nut squash plant is doing great. And here are more of those midget melon, and that's a good size. This is a little um, personal size cantaloupe, and I had one over the weekend for breakfast, and it was amazing. We love those little melons. This was the roost out potato bed. Cleared this out, and I planted some bush peas. I'm not sure what I'm going to put on the other side of this bed. I have some cool weather seedlings inside. I may sow some more peas in there, I'm not really sure. This side of the garden is great for summer crops, but the way the sun shifts, it doesn't get a lot of sun in the fall and winter. And I do want to try to extend my season this year. So I'd like to plant some of the fall crops in an area of the garden that will get a lot of sun in the off season really isn't the off season if I'm growing in it but you know what I mean I quick got out here the other night before the big storm came and quick pulled all of the rest of the potatoes out of this bed that were left in here so I've got a lot of the debris that I'm gonna wheelbarrow out of here and then prepare this bed to plant something in it I've got a little visitor on my pot of dill This is a swallowtail butterfly caterpillar. <laughs> this misshapen zucchini. I've got some issues going on with the zucchini plant too. But the tomatoes in these containers back here are looking great. This better boy tomato is mingling with the sun gold that's on the other side. And I think that's just so cool to see those slicers and cherry tomatoes together. My Swiss chard looks amazing. We've been eating off of this plant or this pot of plants for quite some time now. It's amazing. I've got basil doing great in this pot. My mint this is a pot of spearmint and peppermint, and I chopped it all back just for it to grow some more for the fall season. This sun gold is wild and chaotic, and it's helping to hold up this pepper plant. I'm not sure. Oh, it's another cayenne pepper. Um, I have this cayenne pepper plant that's coming out of the side of the green stalk and growing down, and it's happy. I'm just going to let it groove there. It's got a lot of peppers on it. Well, a lot for one little pepper plant. My purple opal basil is happy to bask in the sunlight. Now that those beans that were up here are gone, my little ball basil's recovering nicely from its lanky little episode, reaching out for sun underneath those beans as well. I'm not sure what these are. I think they're habanadas, which is a habanero without the heat. And I'm not sure if they'll have enough time to give me some peppers, but that'll be exciting if they do. The containers, let's just walk through here really quick. I've got a lot of cherry tomatoes back here. This is the blueberries cherry with the purple shoulders. I've got some a little riper in another area that I'll show you. These are the atomic grape and oh, that makes me sad. That one split. I knew that these were close. So that's what the atomic grape looks like. All of those colors, how cool is that? It's 
So the chickens will get that one. They'll be happy about that. And these I have to feel and see that one's ripe. These uh, multicolored and different colored tomatoes, you can't just go by them being red, obviously, to know when they're ripe. So you just give them a little squeeze and if they have a little bit of squish, a little give to them, they're ready. Oh, here's a bunch that are ready. I know because I've grown these, I can tell by the, the brightness of the red sometimes. That can be a good indicator for you too. If it's very multicolorful and those red streaks are really bright. I don't know why I picked these now without my basket over here. But this plant is just loaded up with these atomic grape tomatoes and then there's a super sweet cherry back there with some ripe tomatoes this strawberry blonde calendula is so beautiful it's probably my favorite variety of this calendula everything's doing so good back here in this container garden this is a chinese chive and its leaves are flatter than a traditional chives regular chives and i hacked my orange mint down just to let it come back to life it was getting really lanky this acorn squash I had given up on I didn't think it would take off and obviously it's not going to have time to make any acorn squash but it's really trying I've got another one over here so we'll just let it keep growing its little heart out I've got some sugar pie pumpkins back here this has worked so great as a ground cover uh, this is a butternut squash Got some more sugar pie pumpkins. I've got a sweetheart cherry tomato over here. Another sapola. And we'll just take a quick look over here at these tomatoes. This is a super sweet, just loaded loaded down with cherry tomatoes this is a pork chop which is a big yellow slicer variety and I've got a couple babies on this plant there's another one whoops so modest another atomic grape tomato over here and some banana peppers these were intentionally grown as banana peppers not like my sweet peppers up there here's some Carrots starting to sprout. Another Pavlano pepper. And this is either a Desi squash or just a regular zucchini. I started summer squash in two areas and I can't remember which is which. Summer squash nonetheless. Here's another cucumber, a couple of cucumber plants, but they're taking a really long time to grow. I'm not really sure if I'll get anything off of those or not. They seem to be stunted. This is a sapola, and I'm so happy to see that this didn't split because look at that beautiful Roma tomato. Oh, that's gorgeous. A little bit of a split, but that's okay. I'm gonna get all the ripe tomatoes into the freezer before I go. I wash them, core them, and score the bottom, throw them in a Ziploc bag, and you can skip the blanching step if you do that, which is awesome because, you know, you're always canning in the summer, end of summer when it's the hottest, and if you don't have to blanch, that's one last pot of boiling hot lava on your stove in the middle of summer, or the end of summer. I'm just preparing myself. I've got some tomato tie tape. There's not a lot here, so if I run out of this, I'm going to use some string that I have in the wagon. A lot of these tomatoes are blushing, but then some of them are already showing signs of disease on the fruit. So time will tell what I get to harvest. This is a triple crop. Look at the size of that tomato. We've been eating BLTs morning, noon, and night. I'm not even joking. And 
our goal every summer when the tomatoes start to come in is to get completely sick of BLTs by the time the tomatoes die back every summer. So I've got some split tomatoes. The chickens will be happy about that. Here is one of those blueberries cherry tomato plants. So as you can see, it maintains that purple shoulder as they were when they were young and green. Um, but what I love about these is they have a little star. They have a little star on top where the tomato top was. Isn't that precious? Kids love these, obviously. So do I. <laughs> a lot of these plants look really sad and leafless because they were starting to spread some um, leaf spot. But we're still getting a ton of food out of this garden. And I've got so many tomatoes coming on that we'll come home to. This is a Paul Robeson. So any of the tomatoes that are blushing, which means any of the tomatoes that have started to turn, I'm going to pick and take inside. Once the tomatoes start to turn, they'll continue to turn even if you take them off the vine and take them in. Oh, see, that makes me so sad, but you know, you win some, you lose some. These Better Boy tomatoes have been amazing. <laughs> I can't believe we walked right by these plum sunflowers and didn't even mention them and how beautiful they are. I'm just smitten with my garden right now. This is the most amazing time of the entire growing season and I I just had to pick up the camera and bring you along and show you what's been happening before it's all gone because pretty soon we'll be walking through the fall garden which I mean don't get me wrong is going to be pretty amazing all in its own. There's something about the summer garden that really takes my breath away. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with me in the garden tonight. <laughs>